Welcome to Hardiness Acres. Hi, Miranda. Hi, I'm Jim. We're from Hardiness Approach. And yes, I still have a cold. Ah. You might wonder why we have the name Hardiness. Hardiness means sound in body. Hardiness is, is about being whole, healthy, vibrant, fit, just complete. That's what the dictionary says, and that's why we chose it. It's an, it, it embodies what we talk about. Yes. It's time for a tour of Hardiness Acres, and this tour starts with a dream. Our dream starts with a story. In 2008, which is almost 10 years ago, he was in 2008 the was 10 years ago. Well, it was in August. Yeah, it was August. So we have a few more months till it's 10 years. In 2008, this young man was in the hospital for three days. That changed our life. What did we do? First thing we did was get rid of processed food. And mostly sugar. Yes. We were working very long hours, both of us. On call, seven by 24. If one of us wasn't getting a phone call in the middle of the night, the other one was. I can't remember a time when my alarm clock woke me up. It was usually my phone with a problem somewhere that I had to be dealing or with. Or a patient that needed to be seen for me. This had to change in order for us to be well. We found four areas that needed our attention. The first one was our nutrition, the food that we were eating. The second one had to do with exercise. We needed more exercise and we, we still, we need more exercise now. Also, we needed to be emotionally well on top of things. And the last thing that we discovered was we in order- We needed a homestead! <laughs> you can find places to buy good food, but you, there's always a little bit of question at least, maybe a lot of question about the quality. What did it really come from? How was it raised? Homestead is where you get the most nutritious, the cleanest, healthiest food. We sold everything, we purchased an RV, and we moved to Utah, where our son had a business that he needed some help operating, and we were able to work together to do that. A lot less stress, and it was a good situation for us. And then we found out that he had some land that he had bought sight unseen that he had never used in the whole two years that he'd had it. So we kinda confiscated it for a while and took it over and built our first homestead in the desert. But there was a problem with that. Wind? Lots of wind. That would blow the topsoil away. All the time. For weeks at a time. And our well went dry. We had a great learning experience in Utah. There was a lot to do. We had a great deal of success. It was a wonderful community. We had 55 we, chickens. We did. And we had three goats. We had a cow. We had... Two pigs. Two pigs, actually, yes. And we, we had, had 3,000 foot of, square foot of garden. That three we dogs. Three dogs. About 11 cats. Right. And two turkeys. Yes. We produced a lot of food. We shared a lot of food with, with neighbors, some who really needed some help. And uh, it was a wonderful experience, a great learning experience for us. But we did become critically aware of a huge need that any homestead has, and that was water. our own little lake here. It's an acre big. It's amazing. We, we have two, two geese and some little goslings that were here the other day. Uh, I don't think they've been able to leave yet. It's a wonderful lake. Lots of water. It, it's here year round. You probably know what an artesian well is. If you don't, I'm going to give you some instructions about that. I'm going to show you kind of up this hill here. If you look it's a bit of a slope going up, and you notice it's really green, lush going down in here. So what we have 
is a hillside that's sloping down towards where I am here and then a slope from the right side and a slope from the west uh, left side not west side and it brings uh, moisture water down through the ground but what's interesting is what's been built here if if you can see it it's kind of tough with the light you notice there's water in here and it's constantly here and it, it sets this is an artesian well where the water is just coming out of the ground almost spontaneously and so they've built this foundation around it to capture it and hold it and uh, I understand it's here year-round uh, and in the past it's been used in various ways but I also want to show one other thing so you can understand just the reality of this in another spot over here you can see that there's standing water here as well uh, so the water accumulates in this area now from our perspective a uh, lot of opportunity here to make use of the downslope, the power that comes from that, the water that sets here. Um, a lot of learning to figure out how to best use this, but an artesian well on the property, golden. This is what we're calling the pond, which it truly is a pond. A um, lot of wildlife here and around it. It's kind of an awesome situation. A little bit of cleanup ne needed, but this is our second pond. Here's the little stream that runs on the west side of the property. Uh, this is an area where it's running a little bit slow, but it, it does. it's a little creek. We understand it stays running all year long. So let's review about this water. We've got a little lake, which is a big pond, a little pond, an artesian well, a creek. I would say we're pretty set for water. And this is going to be our future little farm store. It was their tack room, but it's going to be perfect. Uh, we'll fix it all up and it'll be our little store. And this is the loafing area, this part of the barn. And Here's the main part of the barn. This is where we'll hold dances and classes and exercise. Oh yeah. And when it really becomes important, we'll put little stalls in here and be able to have animals because that's what a barn is for. And there's a loft up there. And this is going to be a work area. It was used a bit for a dairy before. Let me get a little bit of lights going on here. Um, if you look, this has a concrete floor in here. It's got some drain areas here for cleaning out. They would bring the, the cows in here and they fed them right here. And then this is sloped down and they could wash it out here if they were able to milk from right here. Could be a work area for us. We'll see about milking at some point. But way up into the loft. That goes to the loft. And this then is an area that has a lot of different possible. This is our birthing area and our milking area and this goes into the loafing area that we showed you around there. And then this little it's got, side. got a door that opens up into the, the field. Up where we were just at, up by the pond. I'm going to show you in the corrals here. This is kind of cool that we have. But this is a special watering apparatus. There's two sides to it here and here. They're identical. Water from the well comes in here. And when the level gets down low, it puts more water in. And it also has a drain that goes out so it can keep a flow going on. It doesn't freeze and it always has water. So I don't know. If, I, I understand how it keeps water in there. I don't understand how it keeps it from freezing, but the, uh, the previous owner tells me he never had this frozen. 
This is our little barn. That's its name, Little Barn. We have some plans for it. Still needs to get cleaned out a little bit. There's a few things left over in here. But the plans include, in the back area back here, see this chicken wire. There is a bit of a chicken run back here. It's got a door that goes out and a door that comes in. So we can keep chickens in here. We're gonna store our animal feeds in here especially the chicken food and we're going to be able to keep some of our let me get down here some of our yard working and gardening equipment in here as well well it's going to be my garden shed i'm going to have pots and potting soil and all this kind of cool stuff because these will open up to windows and i know you can only see our silhouettes but <laughs> anyway this is little barn so we've got big barn and a little barn from the desert, we moved to Oregon, where there's plenty of water. And we even had a river. Five acres, but we wanted to do a little bit more. They wouldn't let us do pigs and cows, and we really need to eat the food that we grow ourselves. And the prices were outrageous in Oregon. We just couldn't afford it. We couldn't justify it. So as you know, we've been on a look for seven months. It took us six months to find this place. This is our last little place. It's kind of dilapidated. It's a loafing barn, but we are going to make it into a pavilion. It has a great roof and, and most of the bones of it are good. What's not, we can fix without too much trouble and we'll have a great pavilion. We're gonna have picnic tables in there and on the other side, we're gonna build our outdoor kitchen so we can have te people here that we can teach. We can have friends, we can have family, we can have all kinds of things go on. So that's one of our visions. One of our big objectives with our homestead is to sustainably live in place. We've said that before and we'll say it again, I promise. As part of that, a big part of that, as we're designing what we're gonna do here, we're gonna implement what's called permaculture, which is a planning process, but it's we're gonna be creating food forests instead of intensive, have to change them, get out the weeds, plow them every year kinds of operations. We want to put in some perennial gardens that we'll tell you more about that. And right there, there are five acres right in here that we're going to build our food forest in. And we are excited. This is our farmhouse. Need some work just like us and our little well house this place is our dream it's taken us 10 years to get ourselves ready and to find it we believe that we've been given some gifts to know about real food exercise, emotional wellness, and homesteading. We believe that gifts are meant to be shared. And while we don't know everything, we're very eager to share what we do know and what we're going to be discovering as we learn more here. I'm going to try to put into words what it feels like to have a home that is going to be our forever home. My children probably don't believe that it'll be a forever home because we've moved so much. But I know it in my heart that this beautiful farm will be our forever home. And every nail, every wall, every piece of anything that we do is something we do because we want to. We can grow, we can live, we can walk, we can see everything. As we put things in place, repair things that are here. We're, we're doing it with an eye to not just getting it done so that we can survive. We're doing it saying, you know, this is gonna last as long as we do. And let's, let's make it look and feel and be what we want it to be and able to be 
there for us as we need it. So it's, it's really influencing how we're doing things. There, there's a permanent attitude in our minds about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yesterday on a video, a live session with Justin and Rebecca Rhodes, somebody in their 60s asked, is it too late to start a homestead in your 60s? We say a resounding no. Hey, we're just starting the second half of our lives. We think this is going to be the best half. <laughs> so join us, learn from us, follow us, share us, and come along for the ride. It is going to be a great one. Mm -hmm.